study guide for test three. All right, so it says factor each polynomial using the complex number system. This is just a fancy way of saying factor completely. Now the factor method I like to use is the box method. We have three terms. This is a trinomial, which means I'm going to use my box. This is going to be my A. This is going to be my B. That's going to be my C. And I'm going to draw my box. Now when it's three terms, like we see here, one, two, three, this is the one where we have to find combinations. All right, so A is going to go here. C is going to go here. A times C is going to go outside the box over there. And B is going to go outside the box up there. So we're going to put the x squared here, the negative 27 here. We're going to put the negative 6x there. And then two numbers. Uh, then we're going to take the A and C. And we're going to multiply them together to make negative 27x squared. So this is where we got to figure out the combination. Two numbers that multiply to be negative 27x squared and those same two numbers that would add or subtract to make negative 6x. So the first thing that jumps to my head is 9 and 3. 9 times 3 is 27, and if I subtract them, I could get a 6. But since I need a negative 6, I need the 9 to be a negative. So I'm going to put here negative 9x, positive 3x. And once again, we just take a look at it. We've got Negative 9x times negative uh, times 3x is negative 27x squared. Negative 9x plus 3x is negative 6x. So I, now I know I have the right combination. All right. So then now to find the factors on the outside. Uh, two variables that could multiply to make x squared would be x times x. That makes x squared. And then I ask x times what number gets me 3x. That's right, it would be 3. And then x times what number would get me negative 9x. Well, that's, that's negative 9. And we can kind of check to see that negative 9 times positive 3 is the negative 27. So we know we've kind of set it up right. So now I have x minus 9 and x plus 3 as my factors. Problem two is just like the last problem, so I'm not gonna go in, um, in as much detail, but it's three terms. So this is my A, this is my B, this is my C. I'm gonna make a box so I can figure out the combination that's gonna help me factor this. This is A, C, A times C, and B. I'm gonna put my terms in the correct locations and a times c so 2x squared times 5 is 10x squared and now I got to figure out two numbers that would multiply to be 10x squared but adds to be 11x 1 times 10 and 2 times 5 get me 10 but I can see that 1 plus 10 could get me an 11 so I'm going to go with 1x and 10x, because 1x times 10x is 10x squared. 1x plus 10x is 11x. All right, now to get the factors on the outside. For the corner, I need to find two numbers that can multiply to be 2x squared. Well, I know I'll have an x and an x to make the x squared, but two numbers to multiply to be 2 is just 2 and 1. So now the question is, should the 2 go up top? Or should the two go on the side? That's what we kind of have to figure out. Well, if we put it up top, there's nothing times two, no whole number times two that's going to get me a one down here. So putting it on the top is just not a good place. So I'm going to put it over here on the left. I'm going to do that because 2x times 5 would get me 10x. And these two need to multiply together and make that 10x. Therefore, if this is just x over here, x times 1 would get 1x. So now that I, uh, and I can just check, 1 times 5 gets me the 5 here, so I know I've done it all right. So 2x plus 1 in the first parentheses, and the next parentheses is x plus 5. Okay, 
So this one is very similar to the last one. They just put two variables in there to try to throw you off, but it's the same thing. You have three terms. We have the first term, the second term, and the third term, ABC. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill in a box where we're going to need to figure out a combination. So A is going to go here, C here, A times C, and B. I'm going to put the terms in, X squared. Negative 24y squared, negative 2xy. I'm going to multiply a and c together to get negative 24x squared, y squared. So now it's set up, and I think of two numbers that are going to multiply to be this negative 24, but would add or subtract to make negative 2. So things that multiply to give me 24 is 1 and 24. Um, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, and I think that's all of them. So now i got to look at these numbers and figure out which two could add or subtract to make a 2. 1 and 24, no, that's not going to work. 2 and 12, no, that's not going to get me a 2. 3 and 8, no, that's going to give me a 5. But 2 and 6, that's going to get me a 2 if I subtract them. So the question really becomes, which number should get the minus sign or the negative sign? So if I want a negative 2, I'm going to want the 6 to be negative, because negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, or you can think of it as 4 minus 6 is negative 2, and that's going to get me that negative 2 I need right here. So I'm going to go with 4x negative 6x. But wait, I need x squared and y squared. And when they add, they have to have x and y, which means I'm not just putting an x here, but I'm also putting a y here. Okay, so just be careful on this one on the test. Don't forget to put both your variables in these locations that I've written in red. Okay, now to get the factors on the outside. Two variables that multiply to get me x squared would be x times x. Right, and then x times what number would get me negative 6xy? Well, negative 6, the x is from there, we just need a y here. So x times negative 6y is negative 6xy. x times 4y would make 4xy. And we can see that 4y times negative 6y would make negative 24y squared. So I know I've got it correct on my factors. So one factor is x plus 4y, and the other is x minus 6y. Okay, this is just another one just to give you more and more practice uh, while you're working on this. But if you need to see how to do this one, I'm going to work it out for you. So A, B, and C. Set up the box. Let's label so we don't lose track of things. Fill in our terms in the correct locations. Negative 9xy. We're going to multiply the a and the c together. And once again, we got to figure out two numbers that multiply to be the 14, but could add or subtract to get us 9, or negative 9 in this case. So numbers that multiply give me 14 is 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. So Adding 1 or minusing 1 from 14 is not going to get me a 9, so I know it's not that one. But if I add 7 and 2 together, I would get a 9. But I need them to add to be negative 9, and when they multiply, to be a positive 14. So I really need those to both be negative. So negative 2xy minus uh, negative 7xy. So when I multiply these, I get positive 14 x squared y squared. And when I add them, negative 2 xy minus 7 more xy moves me further into the negatives to negative 9 xy. So now to get the factors, x times x is going to get me my x squared. And then x times negative 7 y would make negative 7 xy and x times negative 2y gets me the negative 2xy. And just to make sure I'm doing this right, negative 2xy times negative 7xy does make positive 14x, uh, 14y squared. 
And so now I have my factors, x uh, minus 2y and x minus 7y. Okay, so this time we don't have three terms. This time we have two terms. And so when we have two terms, there's two possibilities what this could be. This could be a sum or difference of squares or a sum or difference of cubes. Now, right here, I have x cubed. That means this is going to be a difference of cubes. So that means there's a formula that you should have memorized for a difference of cubes. And I'm going to write that over here. The formula is a minus b a squared plus a times b plus b squared. Now, for those who, who have me, I always teach SOAP as this is the same sign as the original problem. This is the opposite sign of the original problem. And this one is always positive, always positive SOAP. All right, so we need to figure out how to get that A and that B. To do that, we look at our terms here. So the first term is where A is going to come from. We need to think to ourselves, what are three identical variables that would multiply to make X to the third? Well, X times X times X makes X to the third. Therefore, this is going to be X. It's essentially, uh, as some of your teachers may have shown you, is just cube rooting x to the third, which is just x. And that's where this comes from mathematically. All right, and then b is coming from the second term. And we ask ourselves, what are three identical numbers that multiply to be 125? Five times five times five is 125. So b is five. Once again, if you have a hard time doing that in your head, the trick you can do with your calculator is this. You can cube root in your calculator, which will provide this number for you. You do that by doing this. You're going to type the number 3 in, which means for the cube, you're going to hit the second button on your calculator. Then you're going to hit the caret button, and you should see this on your screen when you do. Once you have these symbols here, just type in 125. Hit enter and it's going to tell you 5, letting you know that 5 times 5 times 5 makes 125. Now that you know what the a and the b are, we just plug it into the formula. So my a is an x, I have my minus sign, b is a 5, a gets squared, so I'm going to take this x and I'm going to square it. Then this is a times b, so x times 5 is 5x. Then I got my plus sign b squared, so I take the 5 and I square it, so 5 squared is 25. And you've just factored a difference of cubes. All right, so we have another two-term um, polynomial here. So we have a binomial. There's two terms. So once again, this could be a sum or difference of squares, or it could be a sum or difference of cubes. Once again, I noticed that I have x to the third. That's the clue that this is going to be a sum of cubes, which means it has a formula, a plus b, a squared minus a times b plus b squared. And once again, same sign as the original, opposite sign as the original, always positive. So. All right, so now we go ahead and we want to find the A and the B. So to do that, we ask ourselves, okay, what three identical numbers multiply to give us 8? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So we're going to have a 2. Three identical number, three identical variables to multiply to give us X. Well, that's going to be X. Once again, you can go to your calculator and hit 3. Um, oops, three, then the second button, then the caret button, and then we'll put this into your calculator. And if you type in eight, it's going to tell you two, which is where this number comes from, but it won't do variables. So you do have to think about that one on your own. All right. And then for B, 
Once again, we can just type that into our calculator. And when we do that, we're going to get 7 because 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. But now I'm going to go ahead and plug it into our uh, formula. So my A this time is going to be 2x. My B is 7. And then this is square, uh, take A and square it. Well, keep in mind that A is 2x. That whole thing gets squared. That means the 2 gets squared and the x gets squared. So you really have 4x squared. So please be careful. Make sure you're squaring the whole thing there, not just the x. Then we have our minus sign, and then we have a times b. So 2x times 7 is 14x plus sign. And then b squared, so I take the 7 and I square it. That's 49. Okay, so we have ourselves a four-term polynomial. So there's four terms. We're going to use our box, but this time we don't need to do combinations. But we do need to put them in the order of a z. Then we're going to put our terms in. x to the third, 5x squared, negative 36x, negative 180. Remember the little trick I showed you, if your x, you have an x squared here, that's going to go over here and be the x squared out here. And this x is going to end up up here. So we can see that x squared times x makes x to the third. So we just have to find the other two numbers. x squared times what number would get us 5x squared? 5. x times what number gets us negative 36x? Negative 36. So now I have my two factors, x squared minus 36 and x plus 5. But this time I notice that I have an x squared as one of my factors, which means I need to look for a sum or difference of squares. So to do that, I look at the first term and I ask myself, okay, is x squared a perfect square? Are there two identical variables that can multiply to give you x squared? Yes. Then I look at the 36. Are there two identical numbers that can multiply to give me 36? Yes. That means this is a difference of squares. And the way I showed you how to do this in class was we write the letter A and the two identical variables that multiply to be x squared is x times x. So I'm going to put an x for A. And then for B, I look what two identical numbers multiply to give me 36. That's going to be 6. And so since it's a difference of squares, we can take a shortcut where we do our two parentheses. And then the x goes here, we have a plus 6, the x goes here, and then with a minus 6. And now we have our answer. All right, so another polynomial with four terms, which means we're going to go to the box. We're going to put in every single uh, term in the box in a z formation. And so I'll have x to the third minus 4x squared positive 9x minus 36. Once again, the little trick you can do that this is x squared, so we can move an x squared over here. We have an x, so we can put the x up here. And we can see that x squared times x is x to the third. We just got to get our numbers. x squared times negative 4 gets us negative 4x squared, and x times 9 gets us 9x. So now we have the factors x squared plus 9 and x minus 4. So once again, I notice I have an x squared in my problem, in my factors, so I need to see if there's a sum or difference of squares. So I ask myself, is this a perfect square? Yes, because x times x makes x squared. Then I look at the 9. Are there two identical numbers that multiply to give me 9? Yes. So that's also a perfect square. So I can set up A and B. So the two identical variables that multiply to give you x squared is x. Two identical numbers to multiply to give you 9 is 3. However, we've got a plus sign. And when there's a plus sign, this 3 needs an odd. 
just remember from class, you can't create this plus sign here unless you have an I with this three. If not, it would just make a minus sign, and that would be a difference of squares. We don't have that. We have the sum. And when it's a sum, you need the I. So I'm going to have my two parentheses, one where it's x plus 3i, and one where it's x minus 3i. And then don't forget your x minus 4. And now we have our answers. All right, we have two terms. So our options are a, a sum or difference of squares or a sum or difference of cubes. So looking at this, I have x to the fourth. Well, a four is definitely not a three, so it's not a sum or difference of cubes, so it's probably a sum or difference of squares. So for that to happen, we need to ask ourselves, what two identical variables would multiply to make x to the fourth? Well, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth, and they're identical. So a will be x squared. Then we ask what two identical numbers would multiply to be 625. Now that's kind of a tough one. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to type in, um, I'm going to go ahead and square root that. So to square root in your calculator, you're going to hit the second button. You're going to hit the x squared button. And then you're going to see this little symbol on your screen. Just type in 625, hit enter, and it's going to tell you 25, because 25 times 25 is 625. So now that I have my A and my B, I can go ahead and write out my um, factors. So I'll have x squared plus 25, and then x squared minus 25. Remember, they're going to look the same, just one's a plus and one's a minus. Uh-oh, I just noticed. I still have x squared in my parentheses, which means there could still be a sum or difference of squares. Well, got to go through that process again. So we look at the first one, x squared. That is a difference. That is a um, perfect square. And 25 has two numbers that multiply, that are identical to multiply to be 25. So that is a perfect square. So we're going to go through our process again. <clears throat> two identical variables that multiply to be x squared would be x times x. Two identical numbers to multiply to be 25 is 5 times 5. So I'm going to have a set of parentheses for two of them, one with x plus 5 and then x minus 5. <gasps> but I made a mistake. I had a plus sign here. And if I have a plus sign, I need the letter I with my B. I need an I there. So that means I need to make sure I put my I right here and right here. Don't forget your I if there's a plus sign. All right. We still have another set of parentheses with an X squared. So I do need to check to see if this is a difference of squares. So I look at the X squared. That is a perfect square. I look at the 25. There are two identical numbers to get me 25, so this is a difference of squares. So A is going to equal an X. B is going to equal a 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. Now, this is a minus sign this time, which means there's no I. No I's for minus signs. So we're going to have X plus 5, X minus 5. And now I have my factors. All right. We have another problem like number 9. We see x to the fourth, which means this is going to be uh, probably a difference of squares. If it was going to be a difference of cubes, that four would be a three, and it's not. So this is going to be a difference of squares. And so we're going to go through our process. We're going to write our a. We're going to write our b. And we're going to figure out two identical variables that multiply to be x to the fourth x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. So x squared is going to be my a. I need to figure out two identical numbers that multiply to be 1,296. Once again, I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to hit the second button. I'm going to hit the x squared button. And it's going to give me the square root uh, 
symbol on my screen. I'm going to square root this number. So 1,296 is going to get square rooted, and we're going to end up with the number 36. So that means 36 times 36 is 1,296. So now that I have set it all up, I'm going to go ahead and write my factors. x squared plus 36, x squared minus 36. Well, I still have some x squareds here, which means there's probably sums and differences of squares. So if I have x squared, that's a perfect square. 36, 6 times 6 is 36, so I know that's a perfect square. So I have a sum of squares. So the two identical variables to multiply to be x squared is x, and the two identical numbers that multiply to be 36 is 6. So I'm going to have two parentheses. <gasps> Once again, don't forget, I see a plus sign. Plus signs get i on the b. Don't forget your i. So we're going to have x plus 6i, x minus 6i. Then I also notice my other factor has a x squared. So I go ahead and I check. This is a perfect square because x squared, x times x makes x squared. So that's a perfect square. Then I look at 36. There are two identical numbers that give us 36. So that's uh, 6 times 6. So that's a perfect square. So this is a difference of squares. So two identical variables that multiply to be x squared is x. Uh, two identical numbers that multiply to be 36 is 6. Now, since it's a minus, there's no i. There's no i when this is a minus. And I have my two factors, or my four factors. All right, so we have a four-term polynomial. And that means if there's four terms, we use our box. And each box gets a term. And we're going to fill it in. In the pattern of a z. So we're going to put in our terms. All right. So as a member of the little trick I showed you, if this is x squared, this is x squared. This is x, this is x. So we need to figure out two numbers that multiply to be uh, 4. Well, 2 times 2 jumps to my mind. But then I see 2x times what number gets me 25x? Uh, nothing. So I can't use 2 times 2. That's not going to work. It won't make any sense. So I need to try maybe 4 times 1. Now, if I put a 4 up here, nothing times 4 is going to get me 25 either. So I'm going to need to put my 4 over here on the left. Because 4 times negative 5 makes negative 20x squared. And x times 25 would make 25x. So now I can write my factors. 4x squared plus 25 and x minus 5. Now before you think you're done, you do I do notice an x squared. So I need to check to see if there is a sum or difference of squares. So I checked the 4. I asked myself, are there two identical numbers that multiply to be a 4? Yes. That means this is a, a perfect square. And then I checked the x. Are there two identical no, uh, variables that multiply to be x squared? Yeah. Then I checked the 25. Are there two identical numbers that multiply to be 25? Yes. So this is a sum of squares because there's a plus sign. So now I'm going to find my a and my b. Two numbers, two identical numbers that multiply to be 4 would be 2. Two identical variables multiplied to be x squared is x. Two identical numbers that multiply to be 25 is 5. But since there's a plus sign, that 5 should have an i. So I'm going to have my two parentheses, 2x plus 5i, 2x minus 5i. And then we bring this one down, x minus 5. This x does not have a square on it, so there's definitely no way it's a difference of squares. So we're just going to leave it alone, and we have our answer. All right, we have a two-term polynomial this time. 
which means if it's two terms, it could be a sum or difference of squares, or it could be a sum or difference of cubes. But we have to look closely here. I see x squared. So this is a sum of squares. So I simply ask myself, okay, what two identical variables will multiply to give me x squared? x times x gives me x squared, so my a will be x. I need two identical numbers that multiply to be 64. 8 times 8 is 64. Therefore, my b is going to be 8. Once again, you can figure this out for a difference uh, for a sum of squares by simply hitting second on your calculator, hitting x squared. That's going to give you the square root button on your calculator. You type in the number 8, you hit enter. Uh, sorry, you type in the number 64, hit enter, and it's going to tell you 8. And that's how you find b. All right, so sum uh, of squares, since there is a plus, that b should have an i. So we're going to have x plus 8i, x minus 8i. And we're done. Okay, it says expand x plus y uh, to the 6th power using binomial theorem. So this is that Pascal's triangle uh, that you saw me and if you're in a different class or teacher doing. The Pascal triangle works like this. You have a 1, then you have 1 and 1, then you have 1, and then 1 plus 1 makes 2, and then it ends with a 1. Then we have 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then we have a 1. A 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then a 1. 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus uh, 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then a 1. This says go to the 6. I'm almost there. I'm at 5. 1, 1 plus uh, 5 is 6, 5 plus 10 is 15, 10 plus 10 is 20, uh, 10 plus 5, uh, 5 is 15, 5 plus 1 is 6, and then 1. So I know I'm at the 6 because there's a 6 here. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just look at the numbers. All right, so now that I have it expanded, uh, now that I have the Pascal's triangle out to the exponent of 6, I'm going to go ahead and set this up. So I'm going to write out the numbers 1, I'm going to leave some space, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and then a 1. Now, this is my first term inside the parentheses, so it's going to start first going x to the 6th power, because that's my exponent, and it's going to count down x to the 5th, x to the 4th, x to the 3rd, x to the 2nd, x to the 1st, x to the 0. Now, the y, it's going to go the other way. It's going to start at 0, so y to the 0, y to the 1st, y to the second, y to the third, y to the fourth, y to the fifth, y to the sixth. Now I just need to clean this up. All right, so a one is just a one, doesn't do anything, but y to the zero, that's really a one. Anything to the zero power is one except zero. So one times one is one, and then one times x to the six is just x to the six. Here we have a six, x to the fifth, y to the first, so I have plus because six is positive. Six, x to the fifth to the first, uh, and y. Plus 15x to the fourth, y squared, plus 20x to the third, y to the third, plus 15x to the second, y to the fourth, plus 6x, y to the fifth, plus, once again, x to the zero is really one. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times y of the 6 is y of the 6. And you now have your answer. You've expanded the uh, x plus y to the 6th power using the binomial theorem. <clears throat> All right, our next one is doing the same thing, but it's only going to the third. So our Pascal's triangle goes 1, 1, 1. So 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 
1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then 1. So I had 2, 3, so I'm using this part of my Pascal's triangle. So I'm going to have a 1, a 3, a 3, and a 1. So the first term here is x, so I'm going to start with x to the third power, because once again, that's my exponent. Then it's going to count down. Then we're going to use the y, and we're going to go in the opposite way, so it's going to start with y to the 0, and it's going to count up. And then we're going to clean it up. So once again, y to the 0 is really 1, and so 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times x to the 3rd is just x to the 3rd, plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus, once again, uh, x to the 0 power is just 1, so this is really 1 times 1 times y to the 3rd, which is just y to the 3rd. And now you've expanded it using the binomial theorem. All right, so this is asking us to find the fourth term in the expansion. So for me, I just find it easier just to do the whole thing and then count to the fourth term in the final answer and then be like, hey, this is my answer. Uh, your teacher might have tried to do it a shorter way where they're trying to make you mentally think about it. I think that's hard and very easy to mess up. I prefer just working it all out. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have an exponent of four, so I have to go to the fourth um, to the fourth in my Pascal's triangle. So one plus one is two. Uh, one plus two is three. Two plus one is three. Uh, one plus three is four. I get six, four, and one. Okay, so now I've got my uh, expansion that I need. So I have one, four, six. 4 and 1. So the first thing I got, I have is x. So I'll start with x to the fourth, then it's going to go down. And now this time I have a negative 5 for my other one. So that means I'm starting here at negative 5 to the 0 power, negative 5 to the first power, and so on. And so now I'm going to do the calculation. Negative 5 to the 0 power is the number 1. 1 times 4 is, you know, sorry. Uh, negative 5 to the 0 power is 1, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So I really just have x to the 4th. Negative 5 to the first power is negative 5. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20 x to the 3rd. Negative um, 5 to the second is what? 25. 25 times 6 is 150 x squared. Um, negative 5 to the third power is negative 125 times 4 is negative 500. And then I have my x. Um, and then once again, we have x to the first, uh, sorry, x to the zero, which means one. So I have really have this here. Negative, um, negative five times four is 625 times one times one is just 625. Now they want the fourth term in the expansion. So one, two, three, four. And there is my answer. That's what I'm looking for. All right, uh, number 16, we're going to find the third term, but this time we have an exponent of 5. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Pascal's triangle. All right, so now we've set up our Pascal's triangle. Uh, since the exponent's 5, you know, second number's 5, so I know this is where I need to stop. I'm going to use these numbers here. So we're going to have 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. The first term inside the parentheses is an x, so I will start off with x to the 5th, because 5 is my exponent. 
and then I count down. Then I'm going to do the same thing, but now I have a positive 4. So I'll start off with 4 to the 0. Then I'm going to count up. 4 to the 1st. 4 to the 2nd. 4 to the 3rd. 4 to the 4th. 4 to the 5th. Okay, so 4 to the 0 power is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, and then 1 times x to the 5th is x to the 5th. Uh, 4 to the 1st times 5 is going to give us 20, and then we have x to the 4th. 4 squared times 10 is going to give us 80x to the 3rd. Uh, 4 to the 3rd power times 4 is 640 x squared, 4 to the 4th power times 5 is going to be 1,280 x, and then once again x to the 0 power is 1, so you're really doing this in your calculator, uh, 4 to the 5th times 1 times 1 is going to be 1,024, and now you have the polynomial, they want the third term, 1, two, three. So I'm looking for 80x to the third. All right, so these are some review problems that were on uh, that are coming from the last test that people had some trouble with. So let's kind of go over how to do this again. The direction that it opens it comes from here. If that number is a positive, it opens up. If it's a negative, it opens down. So this opens down, which means the parabola looks, you know, something like that. Our vertex, remember that's our h and our k, and we get the vertex by taking what's inside the parentheses and asking the question, what number plus 1 would equal 0? Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, hence negative 1 for the x part of the vertex. Your k, your back value, the 9, whatever it is, is what it is. And so our vertex is negative 1, 9. A of S is referring to axis of symmetry. Keep in mind if this graph is doing something like this, where we have a point at negative 1, 9, the axis of symmetry goes straight through the vertex, meaning that the x part of the vertex is the same as the axis of symmetry meaning that we write x equals negative 1. Don't forget your x equals. You will lose points in that question if you forget your x equals. The y-intercept. This is something I noticed a lot of kids were still having trouble with. So keep in mind that a y-intercept shows up on the y-axis. And every single y-intercept in existence has the same x value. It's 0. Once again, that's because if you look at a coordinate plane, this is the y-axis, if I look at this point right here, that is 0, 1. If I look at this point right here, that is 0, 2. This point right here, 0, 3. Notice how every single point on the y-axis has a 0 for x. Y-intercepts show up on the y-axis, so they have a 0 for the x. Now, if I want the y-value for the y-intercept, I take that zero and I plug it in. Wherever I see the x, it turns into a zero. And now you follow order of operations. Start inside your parentheses. Zero plus one is one. Then after parentheses, after you do stuff inside the parentheses, you do your exponents. One squared, one times one is one. There's a minus sign in front, so now that's negative one. Negative 1 plus 9, that's 8. So your y-intercept is 0, negative 8. Sorry, 0, positive 8. 0, positive 8. All right, same thing as last time. Front number, it's positive. This is going to open up. That means the parabola would look something like that. Your vertex, you're asking the age-old question, what number minus 5 equals 0, positive 5. The k value, the back number is 8. 
it just stays 8. Axis of symmetry should be identical to the x part of the vertex. Once again, the reasoning why, if we have a parabola that's doing this, and its vertex is right here at 5, 8, it has an axis of symmetry that's cutting straight through it. The vertex is on the axis of symmetry. That means they share the same x value. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 5. The y-intercept. Once again, if we're looking at a coordinate plane, y-intercepts show up on the y-axis. And every single point on the y-axis has a 0 for the x. Which means that if I want the y-intercept, the x is 0. Well, how do I find the y? I go to my equation that we have right here. And I take that 0 and I plug it into that x. And now I just follow order of operations. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared, that's negative 5 times negative 5. Well, that's positive 25. Five, uh, 2 times 25, that's 50. Plus the 8, that's 58. So the y-intercept is at 0, 58. Okay, another problem that some people had trouble with was multiplying the uh, complex numbers, especially the ones that had the squares. So I like to use the box. The square simply means that there's just two of them. Please make sure you're copying the problem down correctly. And there's a lot of people forgot signs when they were doing this on their test. So 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times negative 2i is negative 14i. 7 times negative 2i is negative 14i. Negative 2i times negative 2i is positive 4i squared. All right, so we're going to have 49, negative 14 plus negative 14 is negative 28i plus 4i squared. Remember, i squared is an actual number. It means negative 1. So negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And then we have like terms here and here. So 49 minus 4 is 45. So we have 45 minus 28i. You have your answer. You're doing the same thing for the second one, part B. 2, 3i, 2, 3i. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3i is 6i. 2 times 3i is 6i. 3i times 3i is 9i squared. We're going to have 4. Add our like terms. That's 12i plus 9i squared. Once again, i squared means negative 1. This is really a negative 9. 4 minus 9, that's going to give us negative 5 plus 12i. Please just be careful of your basic math. Last questions. Simplifying the radicals. Now, quite a bit of you, at least in my class, did pretty decent with this. Uh, some people still had a little trouble with What's, what should be going outside the radical? What should be going inside the radical when it came to the final result? So we have a negative inside of the square root, which means we're going to pull that out and have it as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 90. And remember, the square root of negative 1 means i. It's imaginary. It's non-real. Nine is uh, 90, we're going to break it down. So we're going to use 45 times 2. And 45 is 9 times 5. That 45 is no longer there because I broke it down and turned it into a 9 times 5. Then 9 can be broken down into 3 times 3. So the 9 is no longer there either. I'm just looking at these factors here, these prime factors. So I'm looking for two identical numbers. I have a pair right there. Anything that I'm able to circle, any pairs, I will write that number outside of the radical sign. One circle, only one three goes out there. Okay? The i will go next. Then I got my square root. Now a five and a two had nothing to pair up with. 
there was only one two and one five. That means they go inside the radical and they're gonna get multiplied together to make 10. And now we've simplified it. So here, once again, we're gonna break this up. We're gonna take the negative out. So it's square root negative one times square root 243. And the square root of one, once again, is the letter I. Two numbers that multiply to be 243, I'm gonna use three times 81. There's other numbers you could use. 81 is nine times nine, so 81 is no longer there because I turned it into a nine times nine. Nine is three times three, so nine is no longer there. And nine is three times three, so nine is no longer there. So now that they're in the prime factors, I see I have a pair of threes here and a pair of threes here. This little guy had no one to pair up with, so he's gonna stay inside the radical. Now I have two circles of threes. So that means there's gonna be a three outside for each circle that I make. The I also goes outside the radical. The three up here that had nothing to circle with stays inside. So three times three is nine I square root three. 